Singapore's 15-year-olds are top in the world for creative thinking, but they don't necessarily believe that's the case. It's according to results from the Programme for International Students Assessment, or PISA. It's judge, judge students' abilities to generate creative ideas and come up with novel solutions to problems. 6,600 students here took part. The assessment shows that about 60% of Singaporeans were top performers. Now that is more than twice the OECD average of 27%. Singapore also had the smallest proportion of low performers, just 6%, compared to the average of 22%. Less well-off students, meanwhile, not only fared better against their peers from other countries, but scored above the OECD average of 33 points. The Education Ministry says that the results affirm the role of teachers in fostering creative thinking. It also showcases the national curriculum's role in helping students create value. If you want to nurture creative thinking more strongly, I think you need to give students more space uh, to experience unstructured activities and give them more exposure to aspects that allow them to come up with different ideas and examine aspects that recognize diverse or original ideas. And these are things we will certainly take on board in our curriculum review to give more opportunities for our students to demonstrate their creativity. Yet despite the sterling scores, a significant proportion of Singapore students did not believe they were creative. Less than half believed they could produce good stories, drawings or invent new things with a creative streak. Now, these percentages are below the OECD average. Well, let's dig a little deeper, shall we? We have with us Ms. Liu Wei Li, Director General of Education at MOE. Welcome, Ms. Liu. First of all, great results, but why should these high scores in creativity by Singapore's 15-year-olds against their global peers? Why should this matter? Why should it be celebrated? Well, I think... Um in our curriculum, we have tried to put in inventive thinking mm -hmm. since about 2010, but we haven't had a good way to evaluate it, to assess it. Um, we do it the traditional way in terms of the subjects. So these results uh, give us some data about how well we've been doing, how well our teachers have been teaching, how well has the curriculum been able to um, enable our students to develop this domain which is not easy uh -huh. to develop. Yeah. Uh, it also gives us some confidence that our students, while they've been criticised for being um, rote learners, it shows that they are not. They are able and capable of uh, creative thinking. Mm. Um, and this is on top of a couple of PISA cycles. So this is not just a one-hit wonder. Mm. Uh, in 2012, we had creative problem solving and Singapore came up. Uh, joint first. 2015, we had collaborative problem solving and Singapore was first as well. 2018, we had global competence and Singapore was also first. So I think taken together is a suite of 21st century competencies. I think we have to affirm ourselves that we're not doing badly at all. Okay, so so you know this is a sort of like a, an affirmation because you are right, creativity is is hard to measure. Uh, so this is a, a big thumbs up. Uh, but what does it say then about uh, our student cohort in that particular age group, 15 uh, as it stands? And also, how have they uh, been taught in schools? So I think it gives us where quite a lot of confidence when we dig deeper mm. and we mine the data. Uh, what we are seeing is that across the cohort, mm. they are doing relatively well compared to counterparts in other countries. So if you look at students in the bottom 25%, uh, the um, social economic status households, yeah. they're actually beating their counterparts. They are actually beating the OECD average. They are roughly on par with uh, education systems like Finland, Estonia, New mm. Zealand. Uh, so that must mean that across our schools, our teachers have a relatively high quality of teaching mm. and they are able to bring it across to all our students. And this creative thinking is not so associated directly with reading, mathematics and science. So some of our top performers in creative thinking, they are not necessarily top performers in reading 
nor right. for mathematics and science. So this is a specific domain with a specific set of skills. Uh, so this has been very helpful for us to mm. be able to dig through the data and understand that the syllabus is working across subjects. It is also working across levels. Mm. Uh, and it's not just in the subjects areas. It is also in co-curricular programs that we have. So maybe if I give you some example of yeah. how it might have come across. So we have a subject called design and technology uh, that all lower secondary students mm -hmm. will take it. Mm -hmm. um, and they have to come up with a product that meets a certain need. Um, and they have to interview, they have to find out what is the problem yeah. and come up, generate many solutions, figure out which is a better one and actually effect and, and make the yeah. product. So this is just one example of uh, how they are nurtured and developed. Interesting. Um, you know, despite all that you've said and the steps that have been put in place, uh, the curriculum is, 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 is solid. Yeah. The teaching is getting across. But why are the students themselves uh, not having that confidence to, to pat themselves on the back uh, and say, hey, we did well. That's quite telling in itself, isn't it? You know, honestly, when uh, the results first came out, mm. uh, MOE was also a little surprised. <laughs> um, I think it is probably because we don't have a direct way of measuring it. And so perhaps the students have not gotten feedback about how they are doing. Mm. So perhaps in typical Singapore fashion, they're self-effacing, a bit more humble. And so they don't think they're good enough. Mm. That could be some of the reasons. Right, and, and I guess it, you know, it, it always comes against the, the report book scores as well. You know, like, oh, we're good there, but you know, there's always that... Uh, Room for improvement. Yeah, <laughs> end always. of the day. Um, it, it, do you feel that that low score on the confidence is something that we should be working on among our students as well? Is it something that's... We can't just say, oh, it's the Asian humility, but is it something we should really be thinking about? I think it could become an issue, mm. so it's something that we have to seriously mm. look at. Uh, when you don't think you're creative, yeah. you might not put across your ideas. You might self-censor. Yeah. You might not take the lead in a project. You might not volunteer mm. uh, to take your uh, ideas further. Yeah. You may not execute your ideas. Mm. So uh, these would play out in the workplace, okay. it plays out in the community. Absolutely. So, so you know, I, I was wondering, uh, the, the results that you've been getting, uh, how will MOE be using such data, uh, for example, from this PISA Creative Thinking Survey to, to maybe uh, plan future curriculum, plan future policies, you know, going forward? So I think we have to work on the confidence bit. Uh, so one possibility one is to give our students more agency, more opportunities, not just to generate uh, the diverse ideas we, should, we know they can do, but also to run with it, to mm. execute it. Yeah. Because when you do that, you gain in confidence. Yeah. So I think that's what we have to incorporate more into our curriculum. Uh, that's, I guess, also part of uh, your vision for tomorrow, isn't it? So I do appreciate you coming in, Miss Liu Wei Li. She is the Director General of Education of MOE. Thank you for your time. Thank you.